Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 20. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. It was then another year. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there, and was buried there. So Miriam, sister to Moses Aaron, has died. And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Now, Moses and Aaron just had their sister die. All of us brethren died. We only died back then. And let's see, I want to check over here real quick. And... In Judges chapter 11, we find the story of Japheth. Japheth makes a vow to God. He says, anything that comes out of my house when I come home, I'm going to offer it to the Lord. What well, happens is that his daughter comes out. And Japheth, the vow he owes to God, says, okay, she asked for some time to, you know, be, be, to be well herself. With her fellows, she comes back and he sacrifices to God. End of chapter 11. In chapter 12, verse 1. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward. And said unto Japheth, Wherefore passest thou over the fight against the children of Ammon? And didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thy house upon thee with fire. Japheth dis sacrifice his daughter his daughter just died now israel's come up and said, well you know what with a bad attitude well we're going to destroy your house and we see this in numbers too moses and aaron their sister has died and israel comes up and we're going to you know death 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 there's no thinking there's no uh i don't, I don't know what the word to use in verse four god doesn't want human sacrifice so if you would have sacrificed her maybe to well, he did it. Temple service or something. Yeah, he did it. There were things in the law he could have done something else. But he did do it by the oath of God. And then, like I said, that's not the... We'll get to that within time. But the fact is, here he did it. His daughter died. And then the children of Ephraim come up. Well, we're going to burn your whole house down. There's no uh, remorse. There's no feeling. And then Numbers chapter 20, Miriam dies, and oh, we're, we're going to wish we all had died. Standing before a man that just buried his daughter, uh, his sister. And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord unto the wilderness, on this wilderness? That's just like the story in, in Judges. Why have you did this? And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord unto this wilderness? That we, that we and our cattle should die there. Oh, it's along the way. If you guys had not listened to those spies, we would be in the land already. We're just circling for 40 years till you die. That's why we're doing it. You disobey God and you disbelieve God. And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us 
in and unto this evil place. It is no place of seed, or figs, or vines, or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink, and that is a completely true story. But the reason why they are where they are is because they disbelieved God, did not believe in God, and rebelled against God. And now they're 40 years in the wilderness wandering till they die. They are where they are because of God and had them to be like this because they would not believe God. And it had nothing to do with Moses. Right now, this chapter here, Moses is not going to go in the promised land because of this chapter. Had they thrust out the ten spies had they say let's go with joshua and caleb in the promised land right then and there a couple of chapters back we would not be where we are right now and we gotta realize when we rebel against god and we don't do what god says he's going to do and we don't believe what god has to say we go through these wanderings we go through this wilderness and then we start crying baby and we start you know sucking our thumbs and yet it's because of our sins and not god God with a full, full love wanted them to go in the promised land. But sin. It is no place of seed. Yeah, that's a wilderness. And figs and vines and pomegranates. And no place to, to drink. It's the wilderness. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. They leave the, the assembly. They leave the congregation. They go right to the tabernacle. And they fell upon their faces. They're in prayer. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord said on, spank unto Moses, saying, Take a rod, take the rod, gather thou the assembly together. This would be Moses' rod, because Aaron's is in the ark. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak, speak. That rock had already been smitten. You don't go and smite that rock again. The rock, Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 10, 4, once smitten, needs not to be sitting, smitten or crucified again. Hebrews 9, 25, 26, Hebrews 10, 3, 11, and 12. What Moses is about to do and why he doesn't get in the promised land is what the Catholic Church do. You put that body and blood again every day every mass every saturday every sunday speak ye unto the rock before their eyes and it shall give forth his water his water and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock the bible speaks of other places that that's a flinty rock the most driest rock that causes fire so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. Moses took the rod. Now Moses is just probably thinking, okay, I got this rod. I've done this before. If God really wanted me to speak, you would say, you know, just walk up to him and say, hi, rock, give me water. And Moses took the rod, the authority, from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. Exodus 17, 5-6. And he said unto them, Hear ye, hear now. He was told to speak to the rock, not to the people. Moses is angry, and you wonder... We've seen Moses angry before. And you got to wonder, listen, he just buried his sister. And you wonder, you know, I am the sick and tired of you guys. Hear now, ye rebels. Must we, it'll be Moses and Aaron, fetch you water out of this rock? It's like kind of a burden. You got, you got anger and you got sarcasm coming out of Moses. And Moses lifted up his hand. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice. Now, that twice is not 
bang, bang right now. He's already smitten that rock. And the Holy Spirit is telling us this is the second time. And you don't do that to Christ. Christ is not going to die again. That rock is a picture of Jesus Christ. That water is a water of life. It kept them going through the 40 years. All Moses was supposed to go up to him and say something. I don't know what he was supposed to say to it. And the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank. And their beasts also. It worked before. He said, well, water still came out of rock. Yeah, and there's still religions. He said, well, why are there religions? They've done it the wrong way, just like Moses done it the wrong way, and the water still came. And God, elsewhere in the Bible, says, listen, if a, fa if a false prophet speaks, know that it is me that has put, his, put the words into his mouth, that you might be deceived, because... That's what you want. You got two classes going on. You got God that's right and you got Satan that's wrong. Satan got Moses so angry. And I'm not blaming Satan for Moses striking that rock, but there's the anger, there's the people, there's no water, and Moses and his anger. The water still came. So when you look at why does this place is mega church? Why does it have all these people? Why did Moses have all these people? And then one day they'll be all judged. The rapture will divide the saved from the lost. The great white throne judgment will divide the saved from the lost. And the Lord spank unto Moses and Aaron. <laughs> Moses, you were supposed to speak. Had you spoke to that rock, Mo God would not have been spoken to you right now. And Aaron. What did Aaron do? Aaron should have stopped Moses. Because he believed me not. Oh, that's it. There is unbelief. You've got to get down unbelief. If a person today does not believe God is creator, if they don't believe Jesus is God, if they don't believe in the virgin birth, if they don't believe in Calvary, they don't believe they are a sinner. If there is no belief, there is no salvation. Hebrews 11, about verses 4 and 5, you've got to believe who God is. I'm going to turn there. I'm going to quote that verse. Hebrews 11. You can't just say this prayer and then everything be hunky-dory. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, Romans 10. A lot of people are full. Oh, I'm saved. Oh, that person's saved. And it says in Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, belief, it is impossible to believe him. Excuse me, please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that dil diligently seek him. Now faith is the su substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Moses did not believe speaking to that rock would have brought water. That's the only possible output you can get from this thing. God says speak to the rock and Moses smites it. Moses ran back into the into the, the heralds of what happened in times past. Like churches today, and Paul writes, we'll go back to the law. No, the law is no more for salvation. You got to go to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't be saved by how someone else is saved. You cannot have your con A lot of people, when, when they hear a testimony of someone else, they think that that testimony of theirs has got to match that person. And no. Un because ye believe me not, unbelief, to sanctify, set God apart in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given them. Now look at that. 
Here is all the troubles and all the problems that Moses faced. Moses on the mountaintop sees God face to face. The Bible records, gets the Ten Commandments, breaks them, gets the other Ten Commandments. He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He has special. He told Moses, he told Aaron and uh, Miriam, if I is a prophet, I will declare that prophet. I'm telling you, Moses is above a prophet. There is no one ever like Moses. The only other person that's ever unlike Moses is John the Baptist. And yet all of what we've read so far from Exodus to Numbers chapter 20 about Moses, and he's still going to go on, but he's not going to be allowed in that promised land. So don't you think God's going to allow it in heaven just because of the merit of goodness that whoever you think is going to go to heaven just because. No, if you have unbelief, you cannot go in. Moses had unbelief. He cannot go in. No matter how much Moses did of all the works that Moses done. And there's a thing, too. He said, well, Moses, when Jesus, uh, Elijah. Peter, James, and John. Who says they were in the promised land? On that mountain. And they were on Mount Sinai. Moses never went to that land yet. Mount Sinai is not. Mount Oreb is not. In the promised land. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation to the land. Now notice it says it shall not bring the congregation to the land. In the tribulation period, he's going to be in the land. Definitely. Definitely in the tribulation period. Wherever that mountain was on the transformation, if it was in Israel, you shall not bring this congregation to the land. So there's, there is no complete that you're not allowed in the land. Because in the millennium, when Jesus sits at the king of the Jews, Moses will be there in the land. You're not going to bring them through. Now get that. Write that down. Which I have given them. The land. This is the water of Meribah. Called strife. Because the children of Israel strove with the Lord. And he was sanctified in them. So. They're traveling on. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh. Under the king of Edom. You can look at any Bible map. Of Moab, Edom, Edom's down south, the Dead Sea. They're on the other side of Jordan. We're in the Dead Sea area. And you can see any map, that, any usually any Bible map in the back, it'll show you where Edom is. Thus saith thy brother Israel. Remember, they're brothers. Jacob and Esau are brothers. Thou knowest all the travail that has befallen us. Do they know? Rahab and Jericho knew what was going on. You don't need television radio for the press to be working. How our fathers went down into Egypt, Genesis, and early part of Exodus. And we have dwelt in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians vexed us, Exodus, and our fathers, Exodus. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and has brought us forth out of Egypt, and behold, we are in Kadesh, a city uttermost of thy border. We're coming into your area. He's just giving them a quick history lesson of Israel to tell his brother, hey, this is what happened to us. Now notice he didn't change history at all. Let us pass. Now here's the petition. I pray thee through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards. We will drink of the well, the water of the wells. We will go by the King's Highway. Neither. Neither we drink of the waters of the well. We will go by the King's Highway. Now that's important. This is, we say highway one word. This is a major artery road. It's a main uh, thoroughfare of travelers and merchants this is going to be the pathway of the lord jesus christ and what he's saying listen we're going to go on that king's highway we're not going to stop for a drink we're not going to gather in your grapes we're not going to pick anything from your trees we're just going to move on straight 
No exit. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed thy board. We want to go straight through as quick as possible. We don't want to disrupt. We don't want to disturb. We don't want to have any problems with you. That's a polite. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. Edom's too angry at Israel for that birthright. Why? Moses is saying, listen, we're on the way to the promised land. That promised land was supposed to be Esau's. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway. And if I and my cattle drink of thy water, if by chance we do drink, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. We just want to pass this way. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. So they come out and they, they put barricades up and you're not coming through. Road closed. The, thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. Wherefore Israel turned away from him. So they they got to go another way. Longer. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came onto Mount Hor. And that can be found in usually your Bible maps. You can probably draw this out. There's many places they don't know where they are anymore. And the Lord spank unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor. By the coast of the land of Edom, saying, So we're still on the border of Edom. We're down south, southeast, by the Dead Sea area. This is the area where, where Job lived. This is down by the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land. Oh, Aaron neither. Which I have given unto the children of Israel. Because ye. There's a ye. One or, uh, two or more. Ye rebelled against my word. At the waters of Meribah. And what was that word? Speak to the rock. Don't smite it. So Aaron had part in that too. For some reason. Whether he was supposed to stop Moses or while Moses and Aaron walk into that rock, maybe they had little conversations not recorded. The Bible doesn't record everything. Take Aaron and Eliezer, his son, and bring them up onto Mount Hor. And strip Aaron of his garments. This would be his holy garments. And put them upon Eliezer, his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor, in the sight of all the congregation. The children of Israel are watching this. Part of their fall. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. Now look at that. The garments of Aaron fitted Eliezer, without no seamstress, without no working or tailor. Now, was Aaron and Eliezer the same size, or did God do something? And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eliezer came down from the mount. When all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. So now we have the death of Miriam in this chapter. We have the death of Aaron. And Moses is going to be dying pretty soon. And they don't get in the land. These people here are with Moses and Aaron. They're going to die out. Before they get in the land. And their children will go in. They're dropping. One by one. And Esau will not let them in. And that will be a curse to them later on. God said, I will curse them that curse you. And Esau, Edom, 
It's cursing Israel. You know, you can't. And sent men out to stop them. 